In this video, I'm going to share with you six of the most common questions I get from the community related to leaving the profession of pharmacy to start my career in medicine. Hi there, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan Gartland and I'm a pharmacist and current fourth year medical student. Today, we're diving into a topic that's been highly requested by many of you. I've collected the six most common questions about this journey. If you stick around to the end, I'm going to share an important bonus tip that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. Let's get started. Why did you want to go to medical school after pharmacy school? This question is a classic and for a good reason. For me, it all boiled down to my passion for diagnostic medicine and the desire for a more hands-on approach to medical care. While pharmacy introduced me to the world of medication management and medical optimization, I found myself craving the clinical aspects and the thrill of making differential diagnoses. While on my pharmacy rotations, or APIs as you may know, I was very curious to learn about the various types of imaging that clinicians utilized, and was fascinated with how the physicians on our teams could identify impending pathology. Despite my love for pharmacy, I needed to see what was out there, and so I applied to medical school. I did this while I was a P3, or third year professional pharmacy student. Question number two, how important is the MCAT and when should I take it? The MCAT, the gateway to medical school. It's absolutely crucial and a bad score can dismantle your chances of ever getting in. You'll need to dedicate serious time and effort to prep for this beast of an exam. And for us pharmacists, juggling a busy work schedule or our pharmacy students strapped for time while in graduate school, you are tasked with an even greater challenge. Traditional test takers typically have an entire summer of dedicated time to prepare. Meanwhile, you are busy drowning in therapeutics of the critically ill. You get my point. The MCAT sucks. No getting around that, and honestly, no sense in complaining about it either. Treat your MCAT prep like a second job. Give it the attention it deserves. Also, I often recommend this to be the first step of the medical school application process for non-traditional applicants. Take it first before shelling out big money for missing prerequisites that you need to complete. To avoid belaboring the point, I created this graphic to offer the best times to take it. Question number three, how did you handle the added school debt? Debt is certainly no joke, especially when you're already dealing with your pharmacy loans. Transitioning to medicine means adding on a hefty sum for medical school tuition, but with some careful planning and a frugal lifestyle and choosing a cheap medical school, you can navigate this hurdle and pursue your dreams without drowning in debt. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, so you should talk to a licensed professional regarding some of these decisions. If you're fortunate enough to get into me multiple medical schools, I generally recommend that you go to the cheapest one. Of course, there will always be other factors that may sway you towards a more expensive program. Some of these include academic prestige, proximity to home, MD versus DO options, and so much more. But going to a program that is 40K cheaper a year in a low cost of living city will save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in a few years just to get the exact same quality education. Most medical schools are almost identical when it comes to what you learn. There are also other ways to generate income while in medical school. Don't forget, you're a pharmacist. Number four, can you work as a pharmacist while in medical school? The answer is absolutely. Balancing pharmacy work with medical school is certainly challenging, but definitely doable. I have worked all four years of medical school, so I believe you can do the same. Now, of course, the amount that you work will vary from year to year based on how busy you are with school. Consider taking your first semester off to adjust to the new workload that comes with medical school. Then, I recommend you gradually ease back into your part-time work. Companies these days are so desperate to find pharmacists to work that you shouldn't struggle to find a job. Just make sure you don't lose sight of your ultimate and overarching goals. Don't let this temporary job encroach into your medical school life. I think it's important to set clear boundaries with your employer and emphasize that your role is to support the full-time employees, not to run the show. With strong time management skills, you can certainly make it work. Real quick, if you're enjoying this video, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any additional questions, comment them below for the opportunity to get featured in our next video. 
Does my pharmacy residency make me more competitive? Without a doubt, medical schools value applicants with diverse experiences and a deep understanding of healthcare. Pharmacy residents bring a unique perspective and skill set to the table, making them highly competitive candidates. However, despite being a medication expert, you still need to perform on the MCAT. A pharmacy residency is not a golden ticket into medical school. Number six, can I still apply to medical school even after being out of school for many years? Absolutely. Age shouldn't be a barrier to pursuing your dreams. If you're passionate about medicine and willing to put the work in, I say you go for it. Just be prepared for some additional challenges, such as refreshing prerequisite courses that may have expired, depending on how long and how far out you are, or having to consider larger financial decisions, especially if you have children or mortgage or other large purchases that you need to pay for. Regardless, you'll be on your way to a new chapter in your career and hopefully a happier state. Now it's time for our bonus tip, and this is a common question I get all the time. Do you need a bachelor's degree to apply to medical school? A fantastic question, and one that can be quite troubling to some individuals. With close inspection, you may realize that medical schools require a bachelor's degree to apply, and this is posted all over multiple websites. If you're like me, you may find yourself applying as a PharmD without this coveted bachelor's degree. I will be honest, some schools may not review your application if you fail to meet their rigid guidelines. Now, this can typically be elevated with a quick email or phone call to the respective admissions office, further explaining your position and the reasoning why you don't have a bachelor's degree. However, there are a handful of programs who will still refuse you. Seems ridiculous, right? Your pharmacy doctorate somehow fails before the standard bachelor's degree. Now, you probably want a list of places that do this, but in my experience, this changes too frequently to even maintain. My recommendation to avoid this is to apply broadly and just be ready to plead your case to a couple programs. Now that you know, you won't delay your application by a few years just to finish out your bachelor's degree. Yes, I am implying that people have done this before. Keep in mind, you can still apply to medical school without a bachelor's degree. And there you have it answers to some of the most common questions about transitioning from pharmacy to medicine. Remember, this journey is challenging, but incredibly rewarding. If you have any additional questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to comment them below. If you are serious about taking the next step, check out How Can a Pharmacist Get Into Medical School video. Until next time, take care and keep chasing your dreams.